Hi everybody and welcome to our Artist of the Month for the month of November, Miriam Shapiro. This is for Grace Art, Willow Springs. Miriam Shapiro was born in Toronto, Canada in 1923 and then moved to the United States in the middle of the Great Depression. She was born of Russian descended parents um, and celebrated that heritage uh, in her artwork occasionally. As a child, her creativity was encouraged by her father, who taught her all about art when she was only six years old. She is known as one of the most influential artists from the feminist movement. Um, and she lived a very long time, you can see there, from 1923 until the age of 91 in, in 2015. So she only passed away last year. She was part of the second wave of feminism, which occurred in the 1960s, right along the same time as the Civil Rights Movement uh, with Martin Luther King Jr., as well as anti-Vietnam War movements were all at their height. So it was a great time for people to fight for their rights. And in Miriam, she used her artistic skills to fight for women's rights. The feminist movement fought to secure opportunities for women that were equal to men. This right here is called the Shrine, and she had a many, many series of these shrines that she did, and this is just one. Between 1963 and 1965, she did this motif, and it was a reoccurring theme with different objects in the middle, but essentially it was a narrow strip that was centered in a white tri rectangular field. At the bottom compartment was a mirror, which was about self-reflection. Who are you? What are you about? And the middle was an egg. And from an egg births usually a chicken or a duck or some sort of bird or lizard, but creation. And it was to symbolize a woman who would be able to give birth to a child. The third was an image of a fragment borrowed from art history. So you've got yourself, you've got the ability to create with the egg, and then the framework of art that you could put it in. And lastly, she had the color of gold at the top which was a symbol of aspiration on where to go to. You can only go up from there. Miriam Shapiro was extraordinary. She moved to New York and after when she was a child, went to New York and then from New York um, ended up in California. She and one of her colleagues, Judy Chicago, co-founded the Feminist Art Program um, and the installation at the California Institute of Arts called Woman House. Woman House was a, um, like a section of a museum, of an art museum, essentially, dedicated to feminism. Shapiro, along with Sherry Brody, created the piece of artwork you see on the right called, a doll, called The Doll House in 1972. It was made of wood and mixed media, and it was to explore a woman's role in a home. So it took this dollhouse and it had a nursery and a living room and a kitchen and in each room it was then furnished with all kinds of different things, whether it be wood or paint or paper, cloth in some places. It was very reminiscent of the shrine artworks that she was doing, only it was a three-dimensional um, 3D version of that. As part of the project, she researched all different types of artwork and talked about stitchery and fabric. So it was a really multi-deep textured piece of artwork. Here you can talk to the kids about seeing the different types of materials that were used. Oops, wrong way. As a symbol of old-fashioned feminine world, Shapiro used materials associated with femininity to create sophisticated compositions. This is where you can get the kids thinking about what objects or materials are associated with being a girl. In this case, there's lace and fabric, bows and buttons, stitching and embroidery, sequins. These are all things that think of femininity. This is one of her most famous pieces. It's called The Passion of Raggedy Ann, and she took a Raggedy Ann doll and turned it into pop culture art. Other artists that did pop culture with silk screening were things like Andy Warhol, who was a contemporary. Um, well, not in 1997, but at any rate. Um, what she did is she would take objects like the Raggedy Ann pop culture doll and then turn it into artwork, trying to redefine them as high art. In other words, setting an example of um, pop 
popularizing feminism and showing the strength of what that can be. So we can ask things. Why do you think she used a doll in her artwork to show strength? Um, clearly there are religious overtones here and we do need to stay away from that. As a young adult, Miriam Shapira began painting in abstract expressionism, but then as she began to change her focus as she started her hearing about the feminist movement in the 1970s. Shapira was most, most known for her collages, and she called them femages, which was a combination of collage and assemblage and decoupage and photo montages. So in the case of the dollhouse, not unlike Louise Nevelson down on the right-hand side there, she was able to do a 3D sculpture with the dollhouse. She also did lots of collages, and I put in examples of photo montages and stuff here um, with, Robert, with um, Hockney with the photo montage at the top right. We talked about Bearden, Romy Bearden in the bottom left, and then Faith Ringgold with the collage, with the collage quilts. Um, these are all people that um, did similar things. In this homage by Miriam, sorry, by Miriam Shapiro, uh, Anonymous Was a Woman, was done in 1976. The things that we want to point out are the colors that we see and the shapes that we see, and this does look like a quilt that you would put on your bed. It shows in the center the power of the woman, the, the beauty of the artwork that's there. It's very abstract, and it's very open for interpretation. So how does this artwork make you feel? Um, and what techniques did she use? She, here she used sewing and hooking, embroidering and quilting. You can see how the part, middle part is in the middle and it's light and bright with very bright colors. It's very beautiful and it's the center point and it's almost celebrated. Whereas on the outside it's almost framed work. There's smaller squares all put together that present the quilting in the middle as the most important feature, the feminine feature. She was a master pattern in decoration and was the founder of this movement. We can ask the children here, what patterns do you see in the fan? What basic shapes do we see? The shapes, we see lines and triangles, we see rectangles. The patterns are the stars and stripes, the checkered flag with the, the checkered of the red, white, and blue with the red and white stripes. It's an ongoing pattern, it's really quite beautiful. She loved to use fans in her artwork because back in the olden days, women would carry fans with them in various cultures. So, for some of the kids, they were here long enough ago to remember Mary Cassatt from the left and Frida Kahlo from the right. Um, so I put this up here because this leads right into the next slide. Mary Cassatt used women and children as the subjects of her paintings. And Frida Kahlo tended to use the strength of women. Uh, uh, she would use herself as a subject in many of the portraits, as self-portraits, to um, and use symbolism to express what her feelings were. You can see here that Shapiro did what she called a collaboration. And no, she never actually worked with either of these two artists. However, she considered it a piece of work that honored their contribution to art. So you'll notice here in the middle on the left-hand side that Mary and Me, which was done in 1976, Shapiro actually repainted the uh, picture from before, put it in the middle, and then used symbolism, used symbolism to uh, frame that work, almost like a shrine. On the right-hand side, called Conservatory, it was a portrait of Frida Kahlo. Notice how she's kind of depicted like a goddess, and then her objects of the Mexican life are around her, enthroning her. It's a celebration of their contributions to art. Through her work, she reevaluated the different roles that each person, each woman in art, ugh, let me back up. Through her work, Shapiro reevaluates roles traditionally assigned to women in art and society. She created sculptures as well as huge works based on different kimonos and other patterns and fabrics and textiles from Chinese, Indian, Islamic, and Mexican cultures. She overlapped colors and patterns and textures. This, the anatomy of the kimono, which was done in 1974, was a huge piece of work. It was a 10-paneled piece of artwork that explored the colors and patterns and relationships on a traditional um, female garment. So you'll see the striped pattern in the uh, kimono, you'll see the triangles, the squares, the rectangles. I provided an example of a picture of a kimono on the left-hand side so that the children can see what the traditional version looks like 
and how the beautiful patterns, shapes, and fabrics are explored in this piece. So this is kind of cool. Back in 1987, she was actually commissioned to do this piece called Anna and David. It can be seen locally in Roslyn down in Arlington in front of an office building. And when the developer was building this building, he wanted it to be based on the painting you see in the lower right hand corner called Pa De Du, which was done in 1986. He wanted to add life and spirit to the workplace with art. It is the first sculpture that she ever created. So we can ask the people, we can ask the kids, do you see the connection? Do you see what it's like? Do you see the simple lines in her paintings, the color, the shapes? And what do you think these people are doing? So this is Miriam Shapiro, and she passed away on June 20th, 2015. She was incredibly influential in pop culture, exploring feminine and celebrating women in art. And she um, was an incredible influence to the California Art Institute and the feminist installment there.